Straight from your town yeah. It's going down for uh-huh. what's going on Woo! Tune in now to the the, the show, the show The show, the show Take it from me, uh-huh. just wait to see All the cool all things that happen this week On the, the show, the show uh-huh. The show, the show What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show Your information hotspot We have all the things you want to hear about that happen this week So grab a seat, just relax You're watching the show Welcome to the show. He's Lewis. He's Oz. Today we have a lot of great stuff for you guys. We have some interviews, lunch reports, and much more. First up, we have my co-host and Douglas interviewing Snyder. Yeah, that interview was great. We'll have more on that later. But we also have an interv- interview between Anna and Mr. Moreland about their summer trip. Man, I love Spain. After that, we have Isaiah and Siobhan with a school lunch report, which we know all of you want to see. Smaller lunches, but the same high price? I don't think so. After that, we have Spirit Week with Elise and Kyle. Don't you just love Spirit Week? Eh, it's all right. But let's see what everyone else thinks. After that, we have our History of the Month section with Zach and Kent. Breast cancer, very hard topic, not something you want to go through. But on the brighter note, to wrap things up, we have a little side segment for you guys with Morgan and Naeja. I love building stuff, but that's for later, so stay tuned for the show. Yo, make sure you recycle that. What? You heard what I said? Yeah, I- Excuse me. Get back over here. Who said that? Bernie, I don't belong here. I dare you keep it pushing. What? Didn't I say get back here? I don't belong no. here. <laughs> uh, 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 I am not a piece of trash. You throw me in the cycle bin. You understand me? Okay, okay. I'm sorry, dude. I didn't know the importance of recycling. Let's go, bud. Yeah, you know, I was getting really angry back there. I was getting ready to break your arm. I know karate, you know, but glad we could work things out. Yeah, Bernie, do that dance. There you go. Shake those arms. Like Bernie. Up first is Douglas and my co-host interviewing Snyder. He's such a loud guy. He loves coffee, too. I think it's connected. Hello, I'm Louis Carbello today here with Coach Snyder interviewing him about the topic of soccer. So, Coach, how long have you been coaching soccer for? Lou, I've been coaching soccer, high school soccer, for 16 years now. Um, I used to teach at a high school called Apps Academy High School. I was there for five years, and I was the assistant girls coach at that school for five years. When I transferred here, I was the assistant boys coach for two years under uh, the head coach, Kevin Sherry, and then I became the girls coach, the head girls coach here for two years. Then when Coach Sherry left, I moved over to the boys and I've been the boys coach now for six years at the high school, currently in our seventh year. That's a lot of years of coaching. Compare this year's team to last year's team, which one would you rather prefer? Well, that's an interesting question because this year's team is very similar to last year's team considering we're only missing three players from last year's team versus this year's team. Mm -hmm. Um, The nucleus of our team this year is of juniors, sophomores, and a few freshmen. So, you know, this year's team and last year's team are very similar. Last year's team uh, did not do that very well on the, uh, on the wins and losses, and this year's team is doing a little bit better. So I'd have to say uh, this year has been a little bit more – we've had more success, and sometimes having a little more success is a little more fun, but not always. Sometimes there is uh, fun in, in learning. So what was – what was your team's record last year compared to this year then? Last year we were 3-14-1. and one, Okay. Which meant for a long season. Mm-hmm. This year's record, we're currently 7-9. and nine. And uh, so we've over doubled the win column from last year. Uh, and we still have two regular season games to play. So we still have a chance of, of making a 500 record. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we'd, we would have a playoff game on Monday. Okay. So... This year's team, what, was the, what game did you guys play the best in? You know, Lou, played the best and had the best result is, is in soccer something interesting. Yesterday we lost our game 2-0. We played very well the first half. Some of the best soccer we played, and we were losing. We didn't do real well the second half. Um, same thing with the Sterling game. We played real well uh, for a half. But I guess I'd have to say the best win that we had this year was Haddon Township early on, 
And that may have been the, ultimately the best game that we played because we played a game, a system, played within the system, executed what we wanted to execute, uh, and came out with the victory of a uh, top 20 team, uh, which was a, was a big feather in our cap, which really gives our guys some confidence for this year. So was that the hardest team that we've played this year, or is there another team that you, in your mind, you think was better than Haddon Township? You know, it's interesting. They were... The, they had the best record. Uh, the best team we're supposed to play is on this Friday, Haddon Heights. I believe the hardest team we had to play, mentally we have a problem with Gateway, and I don't think they're the best team, but mentally they are. For us, we have to get over that hurdle. Haddonfield may have been the hardest team that we played, considering they are an average size of 5'11 or better. So I'd have to say Haddonfield was the hardest team for us, but yet mentally we have a problem with, with Gateway. And we beat Haddon Township, and Haddon Township beat Haddon Field. So we're good enough to beat anybody. It's just mentally we have to get over that hump. So, Lou, our season is going to wrap up when we lose mm -hmm. come next week. And we could have, we have a playoff game on Monday. We're the 11th seed, and we're going to be playing Palmyra. So hopefully we're playing for another two to three weeks. Okay. Well, thank you, Coach, for your time and coming out to help us today. We're going to send it back to our host. Now, we have Kent and Zach with our History of the Month. Breast cancer affects a lot of people through their lives. So it's always good to stay aware and be supportive of those in need. Breast cancer. Is it really that much of history as it is our reality? Organizations around the world have fought to keep breast cancer on the ropes, from charity events to researches and treatment. Despite all our efforts, the UK and the United States still have one of the highest indications of breast cancer worldwide. Breast cancer can be found in both men and women. In America, breast cancer is more likely to be acquired as your age increases. In fact, 13.2% of people are going to develop breast cancer in America. What happens to your body to cause breast cancer is that breast cells begin growing rapidly. These cells multiply differently than healthy cells. Some symptoms of breast cancer include breast pains, nipple pains, skin irritation, reddening and scaling or thickening of the nipples, and swelling of all or parts of the breast. Other symptoms may vary. Now maybe you're wondering, are there more drastic effects of breast cancer? Well, there are. In the United States, 3% of people die due to breast cancer. Among the population of women, breast cancer is known to have a high death rate in the United States. But all hope is not lost. If properly detected and treated, 89% of people can live up to five years after diagnosed by a prescriptive doctor. Always make sure to check in with your doctor to make sure breast cancer has not hit you. Stay tuned, there's more after this. Oh, snap. License and registration, please. What's the problem, officer? I saw your littering. Do you know what you're doing to the environment? No, I don't. Let me show you. Litter is misplaced solid waste blown by wind and traffic and carried by water. Once litter has accumulated, it invites people to add more. Littering pollutes the air and the grime from the affected trash. It sinks into the soil of the ground. Oh, now I know what I'm doing to the environment. I won't do it again, I promise. That's a thousand dollar fine. Why? Now that you know, go green, stay clean. Welcome back to the show. Now we have Anna Paz with Mr. Morlin talking about their trip to Spain. I wonder if they ran into any bulls on the way. Who knows, maybe the bulls ran into them. Good morning, I'm Anna and I'm here today with Mr. Morlin to talk about the trip he took to Spain over the summer. How are you today? Good, how are you? I am very good. So how did you guys decide to go to Spain? Well, I had done this, um, a similar excursion before, so I decided um, to do this this Spain trip and visit to Morocco um, because I knew it was culturally and educationally balanced. That's good. So what was your favorite part about Spain? 
Um, there's a lot of, there were a lot of favorite parts. Um, it's hard to pick one, but I would say um, museum visits and we had an evening where we saw authentic gypsy flamenco dancers and we saw the Alhambra, which is a, a, was a Muslim stronghold in, uh, in Granada. And we saw um, some exquisite art by masters like El Greco and we spent time on the coast That's and at the beach. Okay. Was there something about Spain that you didn't like? Um, it's kind of hot in the summertime, yeah. so it, it wasn't that we didn't like it or that I didn't like it, but it was sometimes uncomfortable. Um, and Europeans are very different in terms of food, so you're not going to get the same type of breakfast you would get in America. You know, we're used to eating pancakes and bacon and sausage yeah. and eggs and milk with cold, you know, cereal with cold milk. So you don't always get those same things. You sometimes get bread, cheese, and meat for breakfast. So it was a little different, um, but it wasn't bad. Yeah. Um, was there something you were looking forward to seeing that you didn't get to see? Um, I think we, we did a good job seeing most things. I, I know the first time I'd gone to Spain uh, several years back, we got to see a bullfight. And um, this time we didn't. It, you know, that was probably one thing that I, I wanted the kids to experience because it's so different than the things that we do here in America, but we didn't get a chance to do that. But everything else we wanted to do, we pretty much did it. What places did you visit? Oh, we started out in Madrid um, and then made our way south. So we went to Toledo and Granada and Sevilla and Consuerga. If you ever, wow, you see that? If you ever mm -hmm. um, read Don Quixote, uh, Consuerga is where the windmills are. So we yeah. saw the Don Quixote's windmills and we went to um, several cathedrals, especially one in Toledo. We went to the Alhambra in Granada, and we went to the beach. And from the beach, we traveled by ferry to North Africa, and we went to Morocco, which was um, a really different experience for, for the um, students that went, and even the adults that went, because it's, you know, we went to the Medina in Morocco. It's a United Nations um, heritage site, it's protected, it's, it's just very different. It's very, um, every smell you could think of in one place. Yeah. So people were kind of nervous, but I, I had a, a friend I met there seven years ago, and, and he gave us our tour. And I was like a rock star in Morocco. It was cool. Okay. How is Spain different from the U.S.? Uh, aside from the language, and it's interesting because a lot of kids here take Spanish, but they can't really speak Spanish. <laughs> yeah. um, it was interesting to see them try. And some of them did like try, and by the end, got really good at conversing with the, with the local um, population. Um, food is different. Um, in the summertime, the sun's still out at like 10 o'clock. So there's stuff you can do in Spain that you can't do here because the, the life is different. Like the culture is different. Um, getting around is different. Not knowing where everything is is different. But different's good. Well, thank you for being with, here with me today. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Now back to Louis and Ozzy. Up now, we have Isaiah and Siobhan with the school lunch report. Do you eat lunch? Well, if you do, I know this will interest you. Have you ever wondered why school lunches are cold, nasty, unappealing? Well, I'm Siobhan Vaughn, and I have some facts as to why our school lunches are the way they are. This is Osiris Jackson. What grade are you in? 12. What do you think about the school lunches? Uh, I could care less about it. You could care less? What, what do you think could be improved about the school lunches? The quantity, you know, the size, and the quality, like, it could be better. It could be better. Okay. What's your favorite lunch that we have? I don't really know. I don't like My source, Miss Lewis, preferred not to be on camera, but she gave us some great information. Next year, our lunches will be getting meat alternatives instead of the regular meat that we have now. We also may be having smaller portions for lunch as well as no more salt or pepper. They could also take away the snack line at any time this year. How old are you, Miracle? 17. What grade are you in? 12. Okay, so what do you think about the school lunches? Um, they okay, but they could be better. Okay, uh, what can we do to improve the school lunches? Um, well, maybe get like, I don't know, a chef in there, someone who knows like how to pick good seasoning in food. Okay, did you hear the rumors about us getting meat alternatives and a change in lunch, mm -hmm. such as tofu and other nasty meat replacements? No, I didn't hear about that. Yes, that, that's very bad. So what do you suggest we do? Um, I think they should have the students vote on it because the students are the people that are actually eating. 
like eating the stuff. Most of the teachers don't really eat it, so yeah. Okay. What's your name? Chauncey Smith. What grade are you in? Tenth. Okay. okay. So what do you think about the school lunches? Eh, they're alright. They could be better. All right. What do you think we can do to make them better? Order brand name foods. Brand name foods. What what brands do you suggest we get? Uh, Tyson Chicken. Tyson what? Chicken. Okay. So what don't you like about the lunches? The little portions. Like I'm a I'm a big kid. I like to eat. They give us these little lunches. I want more than that. What do you like about the lunches? The snacks. They might be a little expensive, but they're good and tasty. You're right. What do you think about our school lunches? Oh, they're cold, and that makes it less appealing. Okay, uh, what do you think we could do to improve that? By warming up. Okay, now the students, their input on the lunches, they don't like it because it tastes nasty, or we have less, or it's cold or too hot. Now, is there anything you think we could do to improve the lunches? I think that, um, I know that Ms. Lewis calls meetings from time to time with the students during the school year. I think it's very important that um, when Ms. Lewis, the, our um, cafeteria manager, calls these meetings, it's important that all the students come and talk to her about you know, how they feel about the taste of the food and, and how much they're receiving. The students here at LHS feel like lunch is already bad enough. If they get any worse, it could cause even more problems. The students should go to Mrs. Lewis's meetings and put their opinion on how the school can improve lunches. We gotta go pay some bills, so we'll be back right after this. Hey, did you know that you can create a lot less air pollution by carpooling? So instead of using three or four cars, why not all pile together in one? Welcome back! Next up is Kyle and Elise. Don't we all just love school? Eh, it's alright. But Spirit Week is the best. As Spirit Week came to an end, we saw that the Lions could show their pride in many ways, including a series of contests and events between the classes, ending with an amazing pep rally. But I bet you want to see Spirit Week from the beginning. Let's take a look back. So, we're here on our first day of Spirit Week, and I'm here with Milan. Could you tell everyone what the theme is for today? The theme is dress up day. Yeah, I like it. See, I dressed up today. I like showing spirit. Well, I wanted to look bright and sunny. I wanted to make a statement. I put my outfit together by having this inspiration from a TV show called Adventure Time. And I seen this lady, her name Raina Corn. To add a little spice to Mix Match Day, students represented their class in an exciting M&M race. Seniors win. Day three left everyone seeing double. Twin day. We went to the mall. We went and this was the first thing we saw. We were actually forced to, but you know, we like these shirts anyway. On this day at lunch, students of each class competed in a pie eating contest. Can't you see the delight on each contestant's face? The mastermind behind the 5K um, is none other than very own Coach Egan. The 5K has been around for five years. This is, marks our fifth anniversary. Finally, the day came for the students to exhibit all of the hard work they put into Spirit Week. The decorated jaw-dropping doors created big, beautiful banners and even got to show their class spirit by making stunning showcases. After final judging, seniors, juniors, sophomores, and freshmen showed amazing aspects in each area. Finally, it's time for the pep this is pretty energetic, I like it.
I like how we came out. The, it was the best in your song we, they had so far. So. Uh, I like mix match day. I get to have my own style and you know show my different you know theater and sports and you know you just throw anything in there. I probably have to say my favorite day was a uh, twin day. My favorite part of Spirit Week is it would have to be the dance. Uh, mom was a um, mix match day. Mix match day. Dress up. Twin day. Well, mine's had to be the pep rally because I wasn't really here all week, so. My favorite part of Spear Week is mismatch day because you look a hot mess, and, you know, that's my forte. Now back to Lewis and Oz. We got to go pay some bills, so we'll be back right after this. Yo, man, what are we going to do with us useless paper? I don't know. Just throw it on the ground. Really don't have no use. Ugh. What? Yo, you hear that? Run. Yo, look, look. Run. <laughs> Bam. Christian, to destroy the paper monster, they have to throw away all the paper. Okay, Grayson, I'm going to put you right here in my pocket. Wait, wait, what? What? <sighs> what you doing here? Run! Oh, oh, oh. Even though the story is not realistic, littering is really killing our environment. So, so go, go green, green and, and keep, keep it clean. clean. Trashman says, go green, keep it clean. What are you doing? What do you mean? Ever heard of the recycle song? What recycle song? Here, listen. Trash, 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 trash. Stop. Now where the recycle can go? Recycle, recycle. Recycle, 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 recycle. Bottle, 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 bottle. Stack, stacking my cans. To me, it look like a model. I got trash on trash. To me, it look like a pile. You see that over there? I've been doing this for a while. Like, woo! Drop the can recycle, and we'll cycle it then. Afterwards, recycle, we'll tell all your friends. Recycle, big trash, recycle, small trash. Recycle, we'll recycle recycle, with your whole class. Your whole class. We're almost done, but don't go anywhere. We have Naija and Morgan with our building section. Secret's almost out, so stay tuned to find out what we've saved for last. Hi, I'm Morgan. And I'm Naija. And we're here to show you the steps to carving a pumpkin. First, you'll need a marker, a spoon, a bowl, a knife, napkins, and your own pumpkin. First, you take the knife and you cut the top of the pumpkin where you marked it. While you're cutting it, don't cut too deep into the pumpkin. Are you done? When you're finished, lift up the top and you take your spoon and take out the inside of the pumpkin. You gotta empty out the pumpkin. may be hard to get out the inside of the pumpkin. When you're finished cleaning out your pumpkin, you take the knife, cut the shapes in the front, 
all but not too deep into the pumpkin. Take the eye off. Make sure there's nothing on it. Then you cut the other shape off. Triangle. You start carving the mouth. Just shove that in there. After you cut out your face of your pumpkin, you could put a candle or a light inside to make your pumpkin glow. And that's how you carve a pumpkin. Stay tuned, don't touch that dial. You're watching the show. Hey, what you doing? Don't you know that you're littering? So? What you mean, so? Don't you see the sign on the wall? It said, don't litter. Recycle. So? Hey, pick it up. Don't tell me what to do. Hey, what's going on? She's littering. She don't even care. If you're finished with the chips and have an empty can of dip, recycle. Recycle. If you're finished with the bottle and you don't know where to throw it, recycle. Recycle. When you have a pile of papers, don't you know you're killing trees? Recycle. Recycle. I'm sorry that I let I know recycling is important. Recycle. Recycle. <laughs> I'm only going to say this once. Clean up your trash. Ha <laughs> ha. Make me. Don't let your trash fall or you'll be an outlaw. Recycle, uh. Yo, make sure you recycle that. What? You heard what I said? Yeah. I... Excuse me, get back over here. Who said that? Bernie, I don't belong here. I dare you keep it pushing. What? Didn't I say get back here? I don't belong here. I am not a piece of trash. You throw me in the cycle bin, you understand me? Okay, okay. I'm sorry, dude. I didn't know the importance of recycling. Let's go, bud. Yeah, you know, I was getting really angry back there. I was getting ready to break your arm. I know karate, you know, but glad we could work things out. Yeah, Bernie, do that dance. There you go. Shake those arms. Like Bernie. Welcome back! Sadly, the fun's over. We have no more for you guys. At least for this week, but stay tuned next time for the show. He's still Oz. And he's still Lewis. We'll see you next time on, on the, the show. show. And cut.